Why don't you stand up with us and let's just magnify the name of Jesus. Hasn't this week been so wonderful, so refreshing, but God has a plan for today. So lift up your hands and give him glory, give him honor and give him praise. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We magnify your holy name. Lift your voice unto him and give him praise in this place. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we magnify you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Oh, we magnify you, Lord. We will sing this together. Let there be glory.
this is a prayer conference, right? I like what Brother Hagin said. He said, at times, praise and worship is the highest type of prayer there is. You know, so you, if you're having a prayer meeting, sometimes you ought to just offer high praise and heartfelt worship. I like the way that came out. High praise and heartfelt worship. You know, there's a difference between just, you know, worship and heartfelt worship. See, you might remember where Jesus said, the hour has come and now is when the Father, God, seeks and is looking for, answer me, was it? Not just worshipers. True worshipers. To, uh, to worship him in spirit and in truth. I can't remember the translation, but one of the translations, he said, he's looking for people that are led by the spirit to worship him. Check me out on that biblehub.com. <laughs> it makes you look smart. He's looking. Imagine, I, I, I got this from Pastor Nancy. She said, you know, you can go through scriptures. Can you name very many things that it says God is actually looking for? Is seeking after? I can't think of very many things. I can think of faith. Howbeit, when the Son of Man returneth, shall he find faith? I mean, if, you, if you're on the find for something, you were looking for it. So, when the Son of Man returneth, shall he find faith in the earth? I wonder if we could connect these. He's looking for faith, and he's seeking after spirit-led, heartfelt worship. I wonder if we could take faith churches and have spirit-led worship so we cover both bases he's looking for. Speaking hot off the wire, y'all mind? I wonder if faith churches... Now, that's us, y'all. Y'all. That's us. We came from Brother Hagin, you know, and, and the camp, company, Trump. We're not ashamed that we preach the word of faith, like Paul. I wonder if faith churches could get a hold of this. He's still, Jesus still is looking for, seeking after. God himself said, you think about the God who has everything, who owns it all, but yet he's looking for something and someone and some places where he can just literally sit down and feel at home because he found a people that worship him. So we have the message, but if we just hook up a little bit of worship that's heartfelt and spirit-led, spirit-led, everybody say spirit-led, spirit-led. Man, I want to be the kind of person that Jesus goes, that's what I was looking for right there. I'm, I don't want God or Jesus to go, nope, next. I mean, you look at the book of Revelation, Jesus will come to church every once in a while and walk the aisles and see if they want him more than something else. Oh, that's right. Remember Cindy Black? What about me? What about me? She's not here. So the part she won't tell you? I'm like the Holy Ghost. I just tell it all. <laughs> the part she won't tell you. If you knew who was there, and I can't say who was there, the top recording, Reba wasn't there, but the other top recording artists of the day. Y'all, I'm talking about the biggest dogs in the kennel. I'm talking about the big league guns and some of the strongest players. Here's the part she did not say when she told that story, when Pastor Nancy asked her to say that. She got done. I mean, can you imagine? There's thousands of people there. She's never practiced with that band. She's just followed somebody that's in the top three of record sales and public persona and performance and can just literally sing the pain off the wall. She had to make a choice. Am I going to go up there and sing with my soundtrack and do something that at least I perform well to the best of my ability? Or am I going to obey Jesus? I'm looking for true worshipers. What about me? Does this place belong to me or not? 
Is this my church? I don't care how big the platform is. I don't care how massive the production. I don't care how fast the persona is. What about me? I guarantee it's not bigger than Jesus. So she went up there, and when she got done, the power of God hit the place because a faith person. If you know anything about Cindy Black, come on. A faith person went in there and threw it wide open and just got led by the Spirit. So then the other guy that preceded her, that I, I can't say what it is, just trust me when I say, if they say Doves and Grammys, his name's been there. He walked back up after she got done and said, she just sang five different songs and wrote in the moment. Not one song, not two songs, not three songs. She just orchestrated and sang five songs led by the Spirit of God and turned to her and said, I applaud you. And as did the band. And these are massively players. What am I trying to say to you? What about if we just take a minute here and just worship? Just worship. Songs are not worship. That's just a vehicle you use to worship. Because the band's not going home with you. But are you going to worship him when you don't have a piano player? Are you going to worship him when, you, when no one's there to kind of... These singers... Unless you feed them real good, they're probably not going home with you. And I can't. Let's just take both hands. Just take 60 seconds. Just let it fly, guys. Let it fly. Open up your heart. Let it open up. And let's do what Pastor Terry was talking about. Sometimes the Holy Ghost, you just, you just make sounds. You just make sounds and express that worship. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. And even kick it up just a notch, a little bit. Sometimes you can take volume and you can overcome the thoughts of your mind. You can harness. Just say, bless the Lord on my soul. I'm going to bless the Lord. Let's do it one more time in harmony. What key are you in? F. Let there be glory and honor. Straight forward. And praise. Glory and honor to Jesus. Glory and Reba, come here for a minute. Hallelujah. Pastor Terry mentioned something while you were speaking. You talked about a song. I Googled it and I sent the words to the tell. Because how many years ago did you record that? Uh, 1980. How long ago that was? I just felt led of the Spirit, Reba, for you to sing this and to honor Pastor Terry and honor that place in God. Plus, I like the song. <laughs> you know what? Some, I want to say to some of the psalmists that are in the room, the writers, sometimes you don't know the power of a song, especially when it's full of the Word of God. I didn't even know that story until last night uh, about a perfect heart. Because sometimes you write something or you, you put together a story and you think, well, that's, that's good, that's fine. But you don't know the language that is speaking to somebody else's spirit. Many years ago, 1980, we'd been out on the lake in a houseboat and written several songs, written nine songs in three days. And the last morning we're on the houseboat, the presence of the Lord came into that little houseboat 
and we begin to write and I would sing a, a line and then he would sing a line. I'd sing a line, he'd sing a line. We had a little tape recorder going and thank goodness we did and we never changed one word to it but we just called it our little lake song. We thought in this suite, this is our God bonus here after we've been good and written nine songs. <laughs> But Bill Gaither heard that song one day in a Bible study. We were singing in our office Bible study. And uh, he said, where did that song come from? And I said, well, it's just our little lake song. He said, little lake song, my foot. We're going to record that and take it around the world. So you don't know. But one thing that happened, Terry, that was so precious. I'm sure you know Ralph Carmichael, the great producer, arranger. He had heard a, a little demo of this song, and we'd just written it. And he said, my brother needs, needs a heart transplant. Can I take I have a copy of that and take it to him? And I want him to hear it. His brother put it on a loop and just played it over and over and over and over again in his room. Three months later, they, they said, we've got a heart. They rushed him into the hospital. They opened him up. And the doctor said, why, what are we doing with him? He's got a perfect heart. Come on now. Come on now. What comes into these eye gates and these ear gates is so important. And what comes out of our mouth is so important. Have you know that he has made a perfect heart in all of us? He's in the process, but let me tell you, as far as he's concerned, it's a done deal. Look at somebody and say, it's a done deal. Morning sun. Light of creation, grassy fields, a velvet floor, silver clouds, a shimmering curtain, he is designed a perfect world. And I'm amazed at his talents. I stand in awe of one so great. Now my soul begins to sing out to the soul. From which it came, bless the Lord who reigns in beauty, bless the Lord who reigns with wisdom and with power, bless the Singers, help me bless the Lord.
give him some praise for the heart he's made. I like the phrase, he has made. <laughs> we, when we try to do it, it comes short, but he does the work in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Miss Reba, that was gravy on the stage right there. That was amazing. Uh, we've got to... Um, I received, uh, and I'm not going to tell you who because I don't know if I'm allowed to, but I received a, a transcript of one of the generals of faith in past generations of a book that had gone out of print in the 1930s, and they're just now putting this back into print. And I said, why did we ever not steward these things properly to let them get out of the hands of the body of Christ? I say the same thing about songs. Don't let these God-breathed songs leave our lives. It is our responsibility to steward them and not let them go back into a storage container and go back and start digging through. It's not just about music, it's anointed music. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. That's one of them. That's one of them. Pastors, take your cue. Pastors, take your cue. Pastor Terry, last night we received so much. There were it, layers and layers, layers. And you just gave us so much homework. Thank you. But the homework is what you can live on. And so, so, so precious of, of what we received last night. And we honor it by doing it, implementing it, letting it come into our everyday lives. And I just say thank you so much for spending the time. You've heard all, you, 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 you don't see all this woman does. I just get around and it's a momentum of just, uh, you get sucked up into the vortex of what this woman is and her husband, what they're, what they're, what they're in, in charge of and helping Brother Copeland. One of the things I've always heard out of her and her husband that, I, that has stood out like a, a soldier to me is their absolute honor and respect for what they get to do with not just their dad, but with a general in the body of Christ. That, that all they do is just what's in his heart, just what's in his heart, just what's in his heart. We're here to facilitate that. And that is the purity of what you hear out of her and her husband. And I value that. And um, I just so value that they're trustworthy of what God has put in this man's heart, that they're running it so skillfully. Uh, there's a place that they occupy that is precious. And I'm just so grateful. I was talking to her last night and I said, my husband would often refer, and some of you FOF ministers would have heard him, that years ago, and I don't know what year it would have been when uh, they invited my husband to be on a radio broadcast with Brother Copeland in a panel. And the subject was this, it was in the 70s. And the subject was this, can you pastor and preach faith? because that's how really fresh the emphasis was on the Word of Faith message. And now we know this, how can you pastor without preaching faith? Because we move into all God has for us through this, this divine flow of faith. And so this woman produced that radio broadcast. And we were talking about it. Whoever knew that she'd be standing in this house and we would be receiving. And I just love the thread of God, how he, he, he winds it through years and years of connections and places. And all of a sudden he pulls a thread and you go, you've been in my life for decades without knowing it. Right? And I appreciate divine connections. They have a way of just showing up all, all along the path of, our, uh, of the plan of God for our lives. And so thank you for coming here today and bringing these ladies, precious ladies that came with her. And uh, we appreciate that. It's not like she doesn't have something else to do. And she has, she has taken these days and spent them with us. And that's not a light thing in our book. So Pastor Terry, we love you beyond words. Thank you so much. Give her a great big God bless you as she comes. Just 
music. He is, oh, hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want you to remember this, this um, moment, this little moment that we had in the Lord with that song. And by faith, we'll get to that point in the, the outline today because this will, this, you'll connect that with what I'm going to say. And I believe that will open open up something more in you. Sometimes we taste things in the Lord, like even just for a few moments, like we just had. And you taste, taste something in the Lord. It's one thing to taste and see that He's good, but how many of you know a taste is only a taste? I mean, you know, give me the whole plate. But you can't very often get the, the whole plate. You can't get the whole, without without revelation that you can attach to understanding and application and knowledge and words with it. And that's what I believe that will help, the Lord will help us today to attach greater understanding to the moment that we just had so that we can go back there on purpose. Go back to it when we need it. Or go back to it when He tells us to. Go back to it when He says that's where you need to go. Amen? All right, hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Reba. That touched my heart. I, you know, I had, I had had the thought cross my mind last night about that song, and you know, it sort of crossed my mind, gee, would that be a good place to sing it? And I thought, no, I hope nobody jumps up and wants to do it. It wasn't right last night, but I didn't think about it happening today. I didn't even think of it, so it truly was a surprise. But it was a blessing to me, and it it um, and interesting what I just said. It really will connect with one of the points that I believe we'll get to today. Nancy, thank you again for those kind words. You know, it's one thing to hear somebody say something nice, and you know, you never never don't like it when somebody says something nice. I appreciate it. I'm I'm surprised by it whenever I hear things like that. I appreciate it very much. But when there's faith and real honor attached to it, it's significant. And because in God, whatever you do in God, and you do it by faith and from your heart, it, ha it accomplishes something. Yes. You, it, it opens things up and it progresses, moves things forward, especially in a service. Uh, you know, a minister, no matter who he or she is, can only go as far as the honor that's given to them. And not only, and even with what Nancy was to say, she could get up there here and say those very things with great intention. But if everybody out there is going, yeah, right, well, then we're not going to get very far. Um, you know, so praise the Lord. We won't elaborate on that, but thank you once again. And, it, you know, I, it's, I am so intrigued. And this will come up today too. I'm so intrigued by God's ability and what he sees and what he can, can do. I, my daughter's husband is from West Virginia. We don't have a lot of activity in West Virginia coming from Fort Worth. It's not, it's not on the way to anywhere for us. So uh, the way that they came together and the sheer marvelous, this, I just, you know, this man came into her life. I said, look, if you don't keep him, I'm going to. <laughs> said, uh, this guy, there's, he, is, he is something and someone wonderful for every member of our family. But I decided it didn't matter about anybody else. I liked him for me and I was going to keep him. <laughs> Sounds like he was a stray pet, but that's not true. He's just a wonderful, wonderful man. Anyway, so I was thanking the Lord and, and the way their lives have interacted. I mean, he first... First saw her when he was, uh, t she was 18, he was 22. Well, that was a while ago. That was 19 years ago. But we didn't know it, and they didn't actually connect until many, many years down the road. But I was praying, and I said, Lord, thank you so much. I'm so impressed, and I'm so amazed 
at how you found someone in West Virginia and brought him into our lives. That is so wonderful. But you know what the Lord said to me? <laughs> he said, I didn't find him. I formed him. She <laughs> was like, <laughs> and, uh, like, yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know, and that made sense. He wasn't looking around and go, oh, look what I found. <laughs> what a surprise. Anyway, so, hallelujah. Lord, we just want to stop and thank you and praise you and just acknowledge the magnitude of your wonder and your glory and your ability and, and the, the breadth of who you are and your willingness to, to manifest yourself among us in so many countless ways. But today, I know, Lord, that you are by choice revealing yourself through utterance of the word and through revelation, light, that will strike our ears, our hearts, our understanding, and equip us, Father, to better, thoroughly serve you, serve your kingdom, serve your purpose, serve your people, and to better, to better know you and walk with you as we never have before. Give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I just want to give us a quick, not a review of everything we said last night. I just want to back up just a little bit and and sort of get a running start into this today. You did really well last night. We got a lot further than I thought we could. Uh, so double up, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so as I said last night, tongues in, in 1 Corinthians 14, it reads like a dictionary, and I encourage you to read it that way. Go through in whatever translation you like. I like the Amplify, but I also like using the King James because it's more specific in shorter words, so I go back and forth between the two, or New King James, and it says, it there it reads like a dictionary. What do I mean it reads like a dictionary? Well, if you open up a dictionary and you look to a word that's got a lot of different meanings, well, one meaning doesn't mean that the other one doesn't necessarily uh, exist or that it's wrong. It just means in certain applications, it means this. And really, you can read through all those in certain applications. It means a combination, maybe one or more, or maybe all. Okay, there's, it depends on the user and the context. So sometimes you can look up a word and you may find you know, three or four, but other words, you find half a page in a dictionary of all the different meanings, especially a very uh, collegiate level dictionary that gives you a lot of very specific definitions. So if you read 1 Corinthians 14 like that and don't start looking at it, and, and the first thing you see is um, that this is better than that, and don't do this, and don't, don't get, as I said yesterday, don't do, do that for this purpose. There is an application for do's and don'ts and when something applies, and you can see that. That's more for application than it is for definition. All right, so 1 Corinthians 14. Twice in 1 Corinthians 14, it says different kinds of tongues, and that means, as we said, not only a variety of tongues, but a variety of expressions, as well as a variety of purposes, a variety of applications. That you can see in 1 Corinthians 14, and it gives many different end results. It'll tell you what tongues, where, where tongues will take you and where, where the ceiling in certain applications is with tongues and another operation of the, of the Spirit must be applied with it. And those, those things like tongues and interpretation, okay? Another application comes with it to take it yet to even another level. And then that in itself is revelation because that tells us that there are operations of the gifts of the Spirit, the expressions of the Spirit, the ways of the Spirit. And while you might be able to stop and analyze any one of them for learning and for recognition purpose, but there are times they are so woven together, it's hard to pull them apart. You know, you have to look on the tag of your clothes sometime to see what all it's made of. But when you look at it, you couldn't pull that apart and find out where's the cotton and where's the rayon and where's the nylon. And that's the way the things of the Spirit can be. 
mentioned 15 times in 1 Corinthians 14, so it's not a side topic. We talked about the multiple expressions that we find of the Holy Spirit. And while tongues, in one way you might think that tongues is one expression, no. All those other expressions, that, that most of them and maybe all of them can, can be demonstrated or employed by tongues or because of tongues. Many times they're expressions of the Spirit and we get to that via the avenue of tongues. Tongues takes you there. We did discuss last night too how tongues, because words are the, the expression, the first, the first action of expression of authority is in words. The authority and authority and the power. So power to have authority, but also power to execute happens by words and not just known words. You have the authority or you have been authorized, if you will. I think that's a better way to say it. We have been authorized to come to the throne. And we can come to the throne both in our known language, but there is also application we'll discover today in our unknown language. It's not unknown in a way that it can't be known. It's not unknown completely. God knows. And when necessary, others may know. Even angels can understand when it is to the purpose of God. Don't be trying to, on your own, start talking to angels in tongues. But there can be an application of it because he said we're speaking in the tongues of men and of angels. Okay, go down that path too much. So what do we discover our part is? Well, first we just said, I will. I will speak with other tongues. I will speak with the understanding. So on one level, it's not just that we have a choice. We also have a responsibility but also that factors into how we access and what we do with the things that are given to us. My dad said to me one time and talking to me about the gifts of the spirit, he said, Terry, there's not a shy one in the bunch. Okay. They are all access. And that's why Paul said, pray for me that I would have boldness. And it's not, it's not boldness like I'm afraid to stand in front of people or I'm scared to, but listen, the more you see into the things of God, the more you see of it, the more awesome it is. And in the sheer reverence and fear of the Lord, the boldness can only come as revelation from your spirit. And if you try to operate into that out of your own human boldness, it becomes a very carnal activity and you'll fall flat. And that's how some people actually get over into manifestations of demons and not the Holy Spirit. And people get confused because there are, there are people um, who mistakenly step out into that. Some people more on purpose than a mistake. But they step out into something like that and inject it with their own human boldness and pride. And when they do, they invite the spirits that are connected to flesh and they mimic the things of God. And then a congregation is deceived. And this is not a little topic. It's not unheard of. And you find it in, by every New Testament writer. Every New Testament writer addresses deception. He, and Paul talked about it to the church at Ephesus. Jude talked about it. James talked about it. John talked about it. Peter talked about it. And, and then it's very big in the book of Revelation. And that's deception. And so that is why it's so important to, to practice in your own life recognition of the, the sincere work of the Holy Spirit. Are you going to miss it? Yeah, we miss it. That's not... That's, that's not what I'm referring to, everybody does miss it. We've all missed it. We've, you've missed it more than you know. <laughs> you know. You've missed it more than you know. We all have. But Psalm 103 says, His mercy is towards them that fear Him. I said, Lord, what does that mean? That sounds, sounds like it's really important and good, but what does it really mean? Where does the rubber meet the road on His mercy is towards them that fear Him? He said, it means even your mistakes will turn out all right. Yes. And some mistakes you never know you made them. You may have revelation on it later and not ever realize that you made one. Other mistakes you need to learn from and thank God that he saved you out of it. Okay, I, I diverged, so let's get back where it was. 
Okay, so Romans 8, 14, but the sons of God are led by the, the Holy Spirit, the mature people. As you develop, you learn more about being led. Learning to be led in prayer, learning to be led in tongues is so, 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 uh, it's, not, it's vital, it's so helpful, it, it's, it's a, a blessing and equipping, and it's so overlooked. Just praying in tongues and, and not understanding it or not on purpose or not being aware and conscious and taking notice of what's happening and learning to follow him and speaking in other tongues causes us to fall short of developing and are being led by the Holy Spirit when you're just walking through life. When you're just walking day to day, do this, don't do that. Those promptings of the Spirit, the unction. And when you have developed that recognition of the unction of the Holy Spirit along with the Word of God and you understand the truth of the Word. What did John say about that? He said, hey, you've not only got an unction from the Holy One, but you also know the truth and you're not going to have to look to anybody else to try to tell you what to do with your life. Hallelujah. So we have, we have caused ourselves. Uh, great, uh, it's, we've hindered ourselves greatly by not knowing how to, on purpose, look for, find, and follow the leading and the prompting of the Holy Spirit just in praying in other tongues. So I believe that this today will help you do that. Romans 8, 5 through 6, we started, said this verse last night, and I'm going to pick up there and expound on it as we move forward. 8 and Romans 8, 5 through 6, sets his mind. For those who live, New King James, according to the flesh, (coughs) or I think the Amplified says, according to the dictates or the impulses or the, that seems right. You know, just the, and, and you know, the things of the flesh, not everything of the flesh is necessarily bad but it can be fall, so fall short. And that's where we miss God. And not knowing when to follow the flesh, the impulses of the flesh and the spirit. But if we will develop the spirit and look towards it all the time, it will master the things of the flesh and it will, it will override what seems natural to do. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, to the dictates, the the impulses are first drawn to the unction, the witness, the leading, the insight, the, the sense. There's one place in Acts, and I believe it was Titus, it says, it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. Yes. You know, it's good to develop your seamer. But if your seamer is inclined to follow after the flesh, you'll miss things. So if he who lives according to the Spirit, he follows after the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I want to take for a moment and look at the phrase, set his mind. He sets his mind. Lynn Hammond said this, and it really opened a lot of this up for me many years ago. And she said, to set your minds is like setting the sails on a sailboat. To set your minds directed a certain way. Well, what does that speak to? Purpose, direction, intent. Not just a purposeful outcome, but on purpose, take that setting. Go down that path going to go this way. I'm going to get there from here this way. This is the, this is the route that I'm going to take. This is the uh, progression, the steps of progression. I'm going to start right here. This is how I'm going to get from, to start anyway, from here to where I need to be. Sometimes we know where we need to be. Other times we don't know We don't know much. We don't know much except that we may know we have a need, need an answer, need help. Sometimes, though, we don't have any idea that we even need something or aren't even aware of 
about what the need is or that there even is one. But when we yield to him, knowing that we don't know, that's one thing you can always know is that you don't know. And you can do it with great boldness and confidence that there's clearly something here I don't know. And what I, and I don't know anything about what I don't know. And if I knew what I needed to know, I don't know that I would know how to get to where I know I need to go. Don't ask me to repeat that. <laughs> Praise God. So you set those sails and he will lead you, but then there, he helps us, but there is that I will. The same way you have a mind of the flesh, your mind has to tell your body what to do. Your mind is where your will, when you make up your mind, your will follows. And you're, then everything else follows behind your will. Okay. I can will to do something, but until I make up my mind, then I'm not only want that and I'm going to admit, I, uh, that's how I'm getting there. Yes. Well, there is a mind of the spirit. This is not talking about only the mind of the Holy Spirit. It's talking about your mind, the mind of your spirit. Your, your mind is part of your soul. And that mind, there is a mind of the flesh. There's a mind that, that directs the flesh. We've said that already. But then there's a mind, this mind of the spirit. Yeah. This mind that sets will and purpose in the spirit. The idea that to yield to God's will mean, means that you have no will. That's not true. That's not true. You haven't been delivered from having a will. Yes, right. He will never separate you from yeah, yeah. your will. Right. The moment he does that, you're no longer a human. You're no longer, you are no longer in his image. Amen. But the greatest of all honors is that God designed us, created us, and imparted to us the same makeup and nature that he has of a will. And Jesus said, thy will be done. Yeah. But it was Jesus' will to decide that it was God's will that was going to be done. Yeah. And the moment you just, you know, the case Sarah, Sarah, well, guess, guess what? Guess who moves in? Yeah. Who has no respect for your right. will? Right. Has no, 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 uh, uh, wants to overrun your will at every, every opportunity. And will do so if you do not, by your will, stop him. Y'all going to have to listen faster. I'm not even halfway down the page. Here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the setting of ourselves requires a purpose. You have to know what a tool does so you can get a job done. There are people who have, are great tradesmen and, and they have all their tools, but but the, if I was to look at them, I wouldn't know, I might not even know what those tools, what they are, the trade, you know, the, uh, what trade they're the tools of. No understanding of that. My husband is a wood carver. You know, he worked as a wood carver. He doesn't get to do it very often, but he, he, I've seen some of his work. They're beautiful. His wood carvings uh, from New England. So in New England, in your Italian, you learn to play the accordion and you carve wood. This is, this, is just, this is just what happens. So he can play a mean accordion, can he, David? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Not everybody appreciates the accordion, so he's, oh, there's an accordion player in the back. That's right, Mike Luzecki, but you know too, don't you? Yeah. You need to, you know, we've got multiple accordions. You need to come over to the house and, and you and Pastor George just jam out on that accordion. Yeah. So he was walking around the house one day. The kids, the grandkids were there and he's walking around doing his little accordion thing. And one of the kids, one of the kids looked up to him and said, don't you need to rest? <laughs> Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> you 
you know, accordion is one of those instruments. You either love it or you just think they need a rest. <laughs> okay, back to attention here. So, so there are times when we, though, if we know the tools and we understand what they are for, then we can go to that tool. And then the more skillful you become with the tool, you know what tool to take and how to apply it. This is one of the things that Brother Hagen and Brother Copeland brought to us, among many others, and Brother Caps, that brought to us in the body of Christ wide and helping us understand faith. That f when you say the word faith, it, it's like and my husband's wood carving tools. He has them in all these little slots and they roll up in a pouch. And it's a big you know, leather strap on it. And so that's like, faith is like looking at that bundle, you know, and you try to apply your faith without knowing the tools. You might as well throw the bundle at something, but instead you open it up and you think, and that's what dad learned watching Oral Roberts. He uses his faith like a carpenter uses a hammer or a plumber would use a wrench. They know the tool, they know the tool to trade. And so the things of the spirit are the same way. There are tools even in praying in other tongues. While tongues in, in one broad sense is a tool, but yet there are many specific tools inside that bundle of praying in the spirit. So there are times that we let the Holy Spirit lead us because we don't know. We will never come to the end of completely comprehending and understanding why. Because you change, circumstances change, people change, your assignment, you're always moving forward. And if God never regresses in creation, as we said yesterday, then he never regresses, then, then nothing about him sh should be stagnant or regress either. Our understanding of him must never regress. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So we are co-laborers with God, as we said, in 1 Corinthians 3, 9 and 2 Corinthians 6, 1. And the, the Amplified says, laboring together as fellow workers with God, we beg you don't receive the grace of God in vain. The kindness by which God exerts his holy influence on your soul or on that, that entity of, of your, your mind, your will, that inner man, that inner person. And it turns them to Christ, keeping and strengthening them, but they receive it to no purpose. He said, don't do that. Now let's talk about God's purpose for tongues. Oh, you are going to really like this. In 1 Corinthians 14, 2, it says, and I'll read this one out of the King James, for he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to man, but unto God, for no man understands him. Howbeit in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Well, in a broad sense, I think we have all looked at that and said, right, it's, some, it's a spiritual thing. It's something in the spirit. But there's so much more in that than we have allowed the Holy Spirit to really reveal to us. For example, let's, let's step back and take this apart. Let's center in on speaks not to men, but to God. Let's just look at that. Notice, first of all, the word speaks. Speaks. In a broad sense to say, do you speak in tongues? And we did that last night. How many of you have been filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues? So in a broad sense, that's right. And it, it speaks of a whole category of one of the operations of the Spirit and the, the uh, outworking of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And not just for demonstration purposes, okay? Not just, oh, that's the label you wear because you speak in tongues. That's how we know you're Spirit-filled. Well, it may be the first evidence of it, but that it was, you were not filled with the spirit just so that somebody, and speak in tongues so that somebody would know that you were filled with the spirit. There's far more to it than that. Let him who speaks in an untongued tongue. It's very, also more specific than just this broad category label. And it, it is that, but that's a minor purpose of it. Speaks. Speaks is not just randomly throwing words out there. 
just as we throw them out into this, this spiritual atmosphere and realm, we just speak in tongues. Just speak. Can you imagine somebody that just walked around in their, in their known language and you heard them and they're just walking around talking to them? Talk, 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 talk. Happens a lot. You, you, <laughs> happens a lot to you. No, I'm talking about people who are just, you know, they're just saying words and just talking and just rambling on. And then da, da, da. What, what was that a picture of? That's somebody of a picture that needs to be in a, a mental health. Okay. Because it's, it, 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 it's just words, you know, just words without purpose, without intent. And notice it doesn't say he that prays in an unknown tongue. All of a sudden, something's different here. Not he who prays in an unknown tongue. We're not saying, remember this like a dictionary. It's not saying that they're in an application of that. We'll see that there is. But that's not what that says. Let me, let me change that word speaks. Discusses. He that discusses in an unknown tongue. Takes my breath. Exodus 33, 11. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. How many just conversations have you had with God in tongues? With that, with, with that as the purpose and not just throwing words out there. Next notice, it says, speaks not to men. We jumped right over that. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not language. It's not my own language. It's more than that. He that speaks not to men, that's more than knowing that when you're speaking, that I'm not speaking to a person. Let me, let me add a word in here that'll help us too. Who's not speaking with men, discussing with men, not speaking over and considering natural words natural input. And if you're not speaking to men, speaking, if it's discussion, is also hearing. So speaks not to men. Now speaking to men can be good, of course. If it's a bad thing, we're in trouble right now. But speaking to men can also be a bad thing. Good thing? Bad thing. Yes. Partly depends on who you're speaking to. What you're speaking about. What are you looking for from that conversation? Is God a factor in it or not? Even with good people, your pastor. A spiritual friend, a spouse. But there comes a point when you better cut. The, if you start looking for answers that need to come from God, that come, need to come from the spiritual realm, at some point, people should not be the source. And even if you're getting good words and good thought and good input or information, education, even with that, it must still be measured and weighed in the balance with what the Word says and what the Spirit of God says to you from the Word. And you should be able to have had communion with God and have that have been in a place of discussing with Him so that by the Spirit you recognize. And you recognize when, okay, I need to shut that out. You know, it also includes self-talk. Speaks not to men. We, that's you too. And all the blah, 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 blah. Human reasoning, human thinking. Your own reasoning comes in words. 
there's very little reasoning that gets you anywhere without words attached to it. So speaking in other tongues turns your focus from men, where? To God. He that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to God. This, if you just put it in a, as we said before, categorically, and say, well, that's, we're just, it's spiritual, it's in the God realm. But what about really speaking to God? Speaking has a tone. Have you ever heard of the phrase, don't speak to me in that tone of voice? Don't speak to me like that. But speaking with God, when conversation is full, whether it's full of love, a question, a, a, a cry for help, all those expressions we said, but speaking to him. And tongues, one of the things that helps you locate one of those parts, what part of this inner man, what part does that come out of? And one of the things that helps me in that is recognizing that tone and then expecting that the tone that I address him in, I'm listening for the same place that came out of is the place where he will bring light to. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Speaking has a tone and it is, it brings understanding. It's two way. It requires this, requires faith. Hebrews eleven six. without faith, it's impossible to please him. Well, how does that fit here? Well, you back it up a verse in Hebrews 11, 5, you find out that Enoch walked with God or that Enoch pleased God. Then you go back to Genesis yeah. chapter 5, verse 24, it says he walked Lost. with God. He walked with God. And so it took faith for that walk with God. What does a walk with God look like? What, is that, what, what picture does that paint for you? Adam walked with God. Yes. And it's, it's, if you just talk about a whole lifetime, well, it just maybe means that he, you know, he followed God's ways. But there were a lot of people, there was always been a lot of people who would walk with God that way. But there was something in the fellowship, the, the walking that Enoch had with God, the way I see it, he was walking with God, walked with him and walked with him and walked with him. And God said, you know what, Enoch? We've been at your house for a long time. Let's go to mine. It's time to go to my house. So they went to God's house and Enoch said, I don't think I'll go back. Because of faith, Enoch was caught up and transferred to heaven. Because of his faith, walking with God, it pleased God so much, it brought him to the catching up. Do you suppose that might be important in the catching away of the church? Yes. Is yes. Who's walking with God? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the first and highest purpose of tongues is communing with him. Yeah. And understanding, using it that way. You know, any relationship you have, you have to learn to communicate. You have to learn. There's something I want to get to in just a moment. I think it might surprise you. This turns our face away from men to him, away from the natural world to a greater awareness of him. When you do this, when you're reaching in your spirit, like we said last night, and you're looking for words, not just the same old words, but words. And you're looking for the tone. What tone will carry those words? And you do that and you do it by faith. Then there is 
going to be, by the very nature of what's happening, a greater awareness of him. We should never rely on feeling God's presence, but we should never be away from sensing and being aware of his presence. There's an outward feeling that we can experience, or sometimes it gets so big on the inside, it affects all the outside. But even when that is not there, even in those moments where you, you feel lonely, you feel sad, you feel worried, fearful, whatever the feeling and pressure might be, and yet to know how to just look and to know, no, there he is, and always be aware. So we're turning away from the world and the world's ways to a greater awareness of him. Him who? Him, God, our Father. Our Father. God, our Lord. As Father, it means Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there for me. And he named himself. He said, I am the Lord who's here. I'm the Lord who's present. <clears throat> and to recognize that. I told my prayer groups for many years, you need three ears in a prayer group. You need an ear in your, in your inner man. You need the ear. You need to hear yourself. You need to hear what you're saying. No matter how quiet you're speaking on the inside or on the outside, you need to hear, especially in tongues, and hear what, listen to what's coming out. But then you need to hear and listen for the Spirit of God, what He's saying, sometimes through other people or in your own spirit, listening for a tone. This is important in music. As watch, especially for musicians. And I said last night, if you look, some places it'll tell you specifically what instruments have been assigned an ability to speak to certain situations and expressions. So I'm going to have a conversation with God right now, just for a moment or two. I'm going to let you listen. Lord, and I and you know, I Lord, I And I'm not no one can understand. Um, Brandenilamulkleifrandaistoraitishteklembrastevetinomalaistekivaramanzesneinitekishteharemeninyato I see what you're saying about that, and I see where you're coming from. But now let me tell you and impart into you where I'm coming from. Yes, Lord. But Lord, I seek Lebron Oshte Aklangle Kishje Biote. Well, I'll help you with that. Oh, Prastakai. So, Lord, I claim that I still came out here yesterday. Okay. I'm crazy in your name. I'm crazy. Now, I'm crazy. Yeah. 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 I'm crazy. Y
Thank you, Lord. Now, doesn't that sound? Doesn't it have a sound? A little different from <laughs> Put him on the other side of the table and talk to him. He said, well, I don't know what I want to talk to him about. He'll help you. In 1 Corinthians, we'll come, we'll come back to more of that, I think, as we go. But this, that's the building point. That's the cornerstone. That's the foundation for all these other things. 1 Corinthians 14, 2, we finishing out that same verse. Howbeit in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. So let's not jump past this either and just go, ah, oh, it's a mystery to me. I don't know what I said. You don't know what I said. We don't know what we said. Ha, 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 ha. Well, there is a scripture that Brother Hagin loved to quote. He said, let the ignorant be ignorant still. <laughs> but what did the Apostle Paul say? Brethren, I would that you not be ignorant. My grandmother used to say ignorant. I'd rather you not be ignorant of these things. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. The non-spiritual, the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or admit into his heart the gifts, the teachings, and the revelations of the Spirit because they're folly. They're meaningless. They're nonsense. Or they have no purpose. He sees no purpose in them doesn't recognize their purpose. You know, that's not just an unbeliever. He's incapable of knowing them because they are spiritually discerned as estimated and appreciated. If you don't recognize value and purpose in something, you won't be interested in it, you won't pursue it, and you won't know any more about it. Verse 15, the spiritual man tries things. He examines, he investigates, he inquires into, he questions, and he discerns. This is because he values, he sees value in it and wants to search out and investigate what you place value on. And when you, you actively place value on it, you activate the understanding and revelation that will give you even more value. You'll see more value in it. He who has known or understood the mind, counsel, purposes of the Lord, who has known that to guide and instruct him or to give him knowledge. Nobody tells him, helps him understand something. But we have the mind of Christ we hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. If I was to ask you, how does God feel about that? Oh, I don't know. What's his sense of it? With God, it's not just, just that everything is right or wrong. But he has, he's far more sensitive, more keenly aware and sensitive of every innuendo, of every, he has thoughts, he has feelings. If not, then again, you'd be delivered from feelings. But we're created with feelings, emotions, responses. My son said, said to me many years ago, he said, I, I, he said, I, um, how do you say, I want to say it right. I welcome having emotions, but my emotions will not rule me. Yes. Yes. Sometimes the mercy of God means his mercy means his, his love and righteousness will stop him from doing how, what he feels like doing. You see that, how he had to deal with Moses. Moses, Moses leaned into his mercy 
when God very righteously had the impulse and the feelings, get rid of all of them. And his feelings were justified. The thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of his heart. What kind of mysteries? What are the mysteries that we are to understand? It doesn't say in the spirit, he's mysterious. That's not what that says. He's actually speaking mysteries. Well, what's the purpose in speaking them if they remain a mystery? Now, granted, we don't need to know every mystery. Thank God our, our little peanut human brains couldn't handle knowing everything that needs to be touched and thought, and we can process it. So thankfully, we don't have to know or need to know everything. But we can touch everything by the, by the Spirit of God as much as He knows and He understands. But there are mysteries we need understanding of. There are parts He expects us, and He wants us to uncover that mystery, expects us to. He said, well, why didn't He just tell you? Because he, the journey is often more important than the destination. Seeking, the seeking process has more embedded in it than the finding. It's the discovery along the way that's so rich and so wonderful and that develops and matures you. You're not, you're not, but you don't mature in something just by a building block of information. It's the building block of understanding and application and discernment and discretion and maturity of application that works this at this time but that's not to be applied at this time. And the journey teaches us those things. He helps us in that. And the beauty of prayer is that that's part of the journey. It's part of the seeking. It's part where we learn to seek and we can seek in ways that if we make a mistake, he can correct us in it, which is far better than far more costly mistakes out there as we're walking out in life. I call prayer sometimes the, the greenhouse. It's the place where our relationship and our functioning in the spirit is developed and grows and matures. So what are these mysteries? Ephesians 1.17, again the Amplified, I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom, revelation, which is, oh God, insight. Listen to this. Insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of Him. Patsy Caminetti, just in the way she says the word Him, it opened up something in me that I realized I was missing because she would talk about him. Talk about getting your pronouns right. <laughs> him. Revelation of him. Insight, wisdom, working knowledge, comprehension, and deep and intimate knowledge of Him. Sometimes saying the word God it helps us abbreviate. We know who we're referencing and we're talking about. But the word God just comes from a German word and it just means deity. I mean, to a lot of people, the rock is God. You know, or the sun is God. The moon is God. The who knows what is God. And it's something that 
someone else has exalted as deity and they follow and worship or try to appease. But our God, no other God can do this, you understand. He clarifies himself who he is. He tells us who he is. Let's think about some of his titles. What's, what's a few of God's titles? What's the very first thing you come, come to that you observe in Genesis chapter one? In the beginning, God created. He's creator. He's healer. He's redeemer. He's king of the universe. That's something the Jews say. We, we don't use that phrase, but I love it. They do. They say it a lot. They refer to him in prayer often. He's king of the universe. But just for a moment, let's just take that word, creator. He is creator on a scale that we're unfamiliar with. We all create. We've all created something. You know, people say, oh, you're creative. You're creative. Well, we're all creative. You know, some might say, well, the only thing I've ever created is a mess. But... But you've created. <laughs> Everybody's created something. You've, everybody has, we've all, whether it's created a note, created a sentence, created an environment. We all have a creative ability within us. Kids create. And you love it that they did. And you look at that and say, oh, thank you. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Sometimes you look at it and go, that's really good. But in your mind, you're thinking, for a four-year-old, that's really good. Okay? Yeah. Probably not going to put that on eBay, but that's really good. <laughs> some things are good. Some things are bad. But the best of the best among us, the Van Gogh the Monet, the Rembrandt, the creator, the, the, the finest of musicians, Mozart, Bach, Paul McCartney, I don't know, whatever your genre. <laughs> the greatest that you stand back and say, wow, wow. And things that, that will last at least as long as this earth life exists. I don't promise an eternity, but the best of the best are nowhere near as good as he is at that. All an artist can do that paints beautifully is try in some way to capture some tiny little square of God's creation that expands and goes into areas and ways. Yes. Mm. Nor is anyone the best at everything. Right. Right. A lot of people are so good at one thing, not so good at other things. <laughs> Einstein, for example, I think it was Einstein, he lived, I think it was across the street from my husband's grandfather when he was young. And he, of course, we know his genius, that his daughter had to take care of him because he didn't have enough sense to put a coat on in Ohio as he went out through the winter. Really good at some things. Not so good at others. But God is master at everything. But it goes beyond that. Nancy said something the other night about one of her favorite things is to interpret a service. Billy Brim told my husband years ago, she said, you are an interpreter of services. It's so rare for him to not know what to do. He knows how to put things together. Uh, Mylan's service that we had at the church the other day. I mean, Bill Gaither was a contributor to that. My goodness. But Bill couldn't put the whole thing together. He brought a part. 
but a lot of people brought parts. And Christy wanted certain parts included. And the outcome of that, we went, we went from Bill Gaither music to John Cooper singing. If you don't know who John Cooper is, and you might not, I'd say Google it, but you better hang on to your hat when you do. You know, it's probably some of the hardest rock music out there. And he sang. How do you get from Bill Gaither to that? <laughs> Smoothly. <laughs> and there was a presence and an anointing, not only on every part, but on all the transitions. Everybody walked away from there going, wow, wow. What does that say? George, that's just one, one thing that he's really good at. He can do it in programming. He can do it. On the, we're working on BVOV broadcast right now. And he said, well, what do you want to do? I said, you, you're good at pulling all that together. And he, he's already started on our next sentence. I was like, wow, he's good at pulling that together. But God, who is the best at every thing, is also the master of bringing it all together. He brought George and I together and the day he asked me to marry him, we spent the, the rest of the day talking about how we, we envisioned bringing all of his art and animation abilities and graphics and all of that that he had and what my desire in television and, and production and media and video and the things that we... Sh the creativity that we both had and the things that we had separately and how we were going to bring those together and take the word of faith to, to the world. This was, this was our, our dream and our vision. That's just, that's one little thing that the Lord opened our eyes to and we saw how it came together. And we've been living it out now for 46 years, well, 48 years since, since that day. But he's the master of all of us. Yeah. All that we know, all that we know, things we do know, things we don't know. So he is creator on a level we are unfamiliar with. Right. And he never exhausts his ability to express all that you see around him, all of creation. You know what it is? It's just an expression of something in him. There's nothing he creates that, that, that isn't him. All those little bugs. Now, the devil's messed a lot of it up because Adam allowed it. But everything that is created, either it not only in itself expresses something in him, but its interaction with everything else it expresses God, expresses Him, the stars, the universe. Yes. Have you ever been in the presence of someone that you were wowed to be near them? I've seen people be really, I, I was really wowed to be around uh, Kenneth Hagen or Roberts. My daughter was six years old. She was an escape artist. She, we, <laughs> We could be standing anywhere and she'd just be gone. I thought, like, what? You know, and if we were in the mall, it was easy. Just go to the shoe department. But <laughs> even as a little child, that's where she'd be. But we were at a convention. She was six years old. And I, she was, I, where, where'd she go? And you just didn't know. I looked up one day in a restaurant and she was eating off the plate of somebody's table <laughs> down there. <laughs> She was just eye level enough above the table she saw something she wanted. And I was so thankful that woman was talking to her husband and she never saw it. <laughs> I just reached over and got over and pulled her back. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. 
but she got away from me and I'm looking around, it was back room at the Anaheim Convention Center. We're looking around and I see Oral Roberts and she ran over to him. She pulled on his coat and she's, of course, she's so tiny and she's looking up at him like this and he looks down and he said, yes. And she said, I've waited all my life to meet oh. you. <laughs> Now, let me just, this side note to that, which I think is beautiful, and I never actually thought of it till this, this moment. Not two, just a, couple, a year or two before he passed away, he was just living in, out here in California, and people would come to him. And so she was attending Old Roberts University. George was chairman of the board at ORU. I don't know if you knew that. And so we went out to see Brother Roberts, and we, we had a track created of the song that Oral wrote. What's the name of that song, David, that Oral wrote, sang in the Tent Crusades? Uh, the theme song? Yeah, the, reach, he reached down and touched when me. he reached down his hand for me. me. Yeah, that one. So she learned it, and we got to take, took our old tape recorder and set it up, played the track, and he sat there and she sang it to him. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Yes. So that seed of awe produced. Think about, on both a big scale, who you're talking to. God. Him. But he's also the God of master creator. Now, we're just talking about creator now. We're not even talking about anything else. Just creator. Creator of everything. The part you see, how it works, how it comes together, how you can work it. He created anything he created, he created you to work it. To use it, to benefit from it, to understand it. And so whatever you've got, either something needs to be created because you, it's missing or because you have something and you don't know how to operate it. Lord. And while answers may come right in that moment, Sometimes it needs, it needs much tongues. And let those take you somewhere else and lead you maybe into the word, leading you into the, and then that interpretation piece comes in. Interpretation may come right then. Sometimes in, in no need for actual interpretation, revelation is there. Sometimes interpretation comes as you walk it out through the day, through the weeks, through the months. Sometimes it's a process of time. But to come and speak to him about the mysteries. But if him being the creator doesn't wow you, there are seven redemptive names of God. He is righteousness. He is peace. He is healer. He is shepherd. Let me rephrase that. He is our righteousness, our peace, our healer. Our shepherd, our provider, our banner, or our, our victor, our champion. He's our champion. And he's always there. And I can go to him on any one of those and say, I want to know the deep and intimate working of righteousness. What does it mean? What does it mean to me? God, where's peace? I need to understand peace. Jesus, you said don't be troubled. You left me your peace. Oh Lord, so so there's that setting the sail to him to discuss that with him. But the same, the same 
inside tongues is not only the discussion, but the answer. There, there is the, the authoritative revelation. Remember, he will announce to you and declare. He'll speak and manifest. Some of the answers you need need to be verbalized coming up out of your spirit, but it's, it, while it's coming up out of your spirit and your voice, it's him talking to you. It's the exchange of what's happening. But did you know, I one time decided to search an internet search for the names of God. I was well acquainted with the seven redemptive names. And I found a particular list. It was 900. 900 names of God. Once and only once, I prayed every one of those names. It took a while. But you could just take a name and pray in tongues about it and pray for that mystery to be unfolded, the deep and intimate things of God and how those work together. How do those seven things work together? How do I walk in it? How does it apply? What do I need to set my faith for? What I know, the things I don't know. How do I do that? First Corinthians 2, 9 through 10 as the scripture says, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and has not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those that love him, who hold him in reverence and obey him and recognize the benefits he's bestowed. Yet <laughs> to us, God has unveiled and revealed them by and through his spirit because the spirit searches diligently exploring and examining everything even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God. Oh, now this is different. There's, we've been talking about the deep and intimate knowledge of him, of him personally, but what about the things of God? He says he will search out and explore the bottomless things of God. What does that mean a sounding? Sounding the profound. Have you ever heard the nautical term, a sounding? A sounding, it's, a, it's a, a depth exploration. In Paul's day, they would tie knots on a rope, ever so many, uh, whatever their me measure was, fathoms or whatever it was, and they throw the rope over and then pull it back and count how many of them were wet when it hit the bottom. Well, if it went past that, went past the rope, well, we know we're out beyond measuring. So many fathoms. That's called a sounding. He will sound let you know deep, deeper still. Deep and deeper still. Things hidden beyond man's scrutiny. The bottomless things of God. The things of God. The things of him. Understanding the things such as healing. But what about understanding family? Let me help you, men. What about understanding women? Understanding, revelation, insight. You should be able to, on purpose, pray in tongues and understand how to bless people. You know, the best gift to give someone is not necessarily the one, just the thing you want them to have. You know, many times I have to pray and say, Lord, what, what, what would bless them? How do I help them? What can I do for them? Help me see. Amen. Spiritual laws, the law of faith, the law of love, the law of sowing, the law of reaping, the mystery of Israel. God opened John Hagee's eyes to much of the mystery of Israel. The Romans talks about, and through the opening of John Hagee's eyes my, came my assignment from God. I have an assignment where Israel is concerned. I could tell you some of the most awesome things had we, if there was enough time to tell of the things that are happening in Israel with, between us and Jewish people Amen. and what God is doing. Ah, oh, it's amazing. What about the mysteries of the world? 
What about the mysteries of nature? What about the mysteries of the world of finance? You know, real finance operates on a level most of us don't understand. That's how we're so easily duped and conned. Mysteries of technology. Mysteries of space. Mysteries of your finance. How'd I get in this mess? Better yet, how do I get out of this mess? Mysteries of politics. It's a realm. Mysteries of sports. There's such a finesse. Great coaches. They, there's such, they have something about them that enables them to, to bring something out of a player and then also to bring something out of the team in all those different pieces and maneuver that and shape it in such a way that it might change the game. Tom Landry, they say, changed the game of football. He didn't change his rules, but he changed how it was played. That's Dallas, Texas, in case y'all didn't know. <laughs> the world of business, the world of sales. I don't care what you do. The world of waiting tables, the world of cooking, the world of mothering. I thank God he's helped me unravel the mysteries of the laundry room. I kid you not, I have looked at things and said, how am I going to fix that? And pray in tongues. And in tongues, the Lord give me the word to speak to it. Bless God in Jesus' name, I'm going to be without that spot right there. <laughs> and the revelation come how to deal with it, and it worked by faith, or the revelation come, toss that sister, you got enough to go buy a new one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it's good to have the right answer at the right time. Here's one I love though. Love all of it. The, the world of ministry, the world of teaching, the world of education, the world of service. Man, you seek in Him. How do I do that? Praying in tongues. The mystery, and you set your sails. You set your sails for that. Lord, I'm going to pray about that, the mystery, and, and tongues, and then you let Him lead you and you will, as you learn to follow him, and Sister Hammond said it this way, she said, learn to recognize what in your own tongues, what unction is it that God has his finger on? If it's there, then don't change it. If it's not there, here's, here's what I do when I'm thinking, okay, I'm not getting somewhere. I'd shift my tongues into search mode. I'm searching for what is it I do need to do? What is it I do need to say? How do I turn this? What part am I, I my, my tongues begin to search for the part, searching the, the bottomless things of God, begin to search for that, for the answer. Where, what part is that answer going to come from? The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inner parts. There's the best part, right? P-A-R-T-S. Parts, keep that in mind. There are parts, there are, there are drawers, there are pieces in there. Where, where is it going to come from? And what he has you pray into is where the answer will come out from. It will produce the answer. Now this one, the mystery of the future. Isaiah 15, 57, 15, wonderful verse. Thus says the high and lofty one. I mean, he sits on the mountaintop of mountaintops. He is the high and and lofty one who inhabits eternity. God does not travel the timeline. We travel a timeline. He does not travel the timeline. He is as much alive in the past as he is in the present, and he is as much alive in the future as he is in the now. He's already there. It's all, it's, it's all in him. And while we say eternity is not, it, time, that it is timeless, 
The Lord corrected me on that a little bit the other day. He said, but it is measurable. You can't measure it to the end, but it speaks of the hour. Well, the hour in an eternal perspective is a lot different than our, our clock. There's an eternal language. This hour, this age, in the ages that are to come, the Bible says. In the ages to come, he will be displaying the wonders of his grace. There are ages, and the ages then are measured. The ages have a start and a finish, but they'll go on forever. So is there, a, there is a language of eternity. But God has a plan for your destiny. Colossians 3, 3 says that your life is hid with Christ in God, in him. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 and 12, for what a person perceives and what person perceives what passes through his, a man's thoughts except the man's spirit within him. People can look at you and just smile and you have no idea what's going on on the inside of them. But that person knows. We've not received the spirit that belongs to the world, but the spirit who's from God so that we can comprehend and appreciate the, the, the gifts of divine favor and blessing that's bestowed on us by God. The spirit of God knows what's in God. You are in God. God is in you. Sometimes you need to know who you are in him. Sometimes you need to know who he is in you. A difference. Jeremiah 29, 11, 14. I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. You'll call on me. You'll come. Pray to me. I'll hear you and I will heed you. You will seek me, inquire of, require me as vital and find me. When you search for me with your heart, that's not just a, all your heart, like really intense. No, with your heart, with this, with your spirit, I will be found by you, says the Lord. What are you going to find in him? His plan for you. This includes everything God has also for your day. Psalm 139, 16, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Talk about a daytimer. You need to look and see what's on his daytimer for you. Brother Copeland said, my future's not based or dependent on politics, not based in the stock market. My future's not ba is based on my inheritance in Christ Jesus. Praying in the spirit is a divine secret between God and me. It is my future. It is my heritage. It is my destination. It is the vision of my life being prayed out, given root to, before it's even made known to this natural world. Yeah. Romans 8, 26 says, it allows us to pray about things that you could not know. That's why tongues is essential in intercession. There are things you don't know even about the situations you are aware of. You don't know what's working in people. There are things that need to be prayed about that you are not aware of and could have no way of knowing. People you don't know. People you'll never know this side of, of heaven's light line. The hearts of people you don't know and the hearts of others, but he does. Praying in tongues equips us to pray for things no one thinks to pray about or about which no one else knows to pray. I have several others here, but I do want to, do, and I'll just read through them real quick so you, you can search them out. We'll have these on the recording. You can search them out, maybe. But I want to tell you this one's so important. So this uh, friend of mine, there was one I was telling you about in Australia, but uh, she was a writer for the magazine, actually the editor of the BVOV, and she and her husband moved to Oklahoma. They lived in Tulsa, but she would drive down to Fort Worth frequently to do work. But she was told the Lord, I'm going to drive all the way to Fort Worth and I'm going to pray about my destiny. I'm going to pray out my destiny because she knew this. So she gets in the car and she starts praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. And this girl knows how to pray in the spirit. So she's praying in tongues and it's raining. The windshield wipers are going. And she said, I'm driving along and I, she saw my face. 
Well, I knew her, but we were not friends at the time. She worked for my husband, a very quiet, shy person at that time. And so I knew her. We met. I knew who she was. She was on his staff, but I didn't have a relationship with her. And she sees my face. So she prayed about, prayed for me a little bit, said, now, Lord, I'm here to pray about my destiny. Okay. So she set her sail to pray about her destiny. And she's praying in tongues, and whoop, there I am again, right there on the windshield. <laughs> Lord, okay, I'll pray for her. She must be in real need. <laughs> so she prays in tongues for me again. Okay, so we're talking four and a half, five hour drive in the rain, probably longer. She's driving. So she's praying. And then comes back around to again, Lord, I'm going to pray about my destiny. And lo and behold, she sees my face right in front of her again. Okay, I give up. I'll pray about my destiny later. I'll pray for her. So all the way from Tulsa to Fort Worth, she prays for me. Glory. Well, she gets there. It was my last day to work, of work in the television department. The Lord had told me to step away from that. I didn't know he's preparing me for pastoring and other things and other reasons for that. But he said, that, and it was the neatest thing, the whole staff, the whole KCM staff had, I don't know, what they, Terry Appreciation Day, Day or something. And they all had these little buttons that they had made, little cutouts, and they all had something about me. I didn't read them all. I'm, a, I'm just going to assume they were all nice. But <laughs> And so we had a chapel, and it was, it was a real sweet day. But that was my last day in the office. So she got there and said, oh, well, I, I guess that's what I was praying about. That's just, that's, that's just wonderful. But let me, let me the, the rest of the story is wonderful, but let me jump to the end of it. A few years later, she wound up in another state, um, and we were pastoring. The ministry had grown. The prayer department was growing. We were in the Anaheim Convention. I went during a break to my room. I laid across the bed and began to pray in tongues, just praying in the Spirit. And this came up in me, Lord, I need help. And I thought, I didn't know I needed help. But apparently, I needed help. And I knew in prayer, which was my main focus at the time. Lord, I need help. And I'm praying in tongues, praying in tongues. And all of a sudden, her name, all the best way I know to describe it too is like a feather. I, I sensed it. Her name, it's like it floated through heaven and it dropped on the inside of me. Gina. Oh, I, I hadn't talked to her in years. I wonder what she's doing. Where, where she's living now. Interesting. Oop, time to go to service. Jumped up. Go over to Anaheim Convention Center. Look up. And guess who's standing right there? Right there. Yeah. Gina, what are you doing? Oh, I came to the meeting. Wonderful. Where, where are you living now? Oh, I just moved back to Fort Worth. Oh. Uh -huh. wow. yeah. Really? <laughs> Gina, would you ever think about coming over and maybe preaching prayer school? And she said, okay. <laughs> I didn't know. She was just had been scared out of her mind to stand up in front of a group of people. But she had, by faith, literally prayed in tongues and prayed her way out of that. And that's a lovely story, too. Yes. She said, Okay. We live kind of far away on the other side. It's, look, just come once in a while. But over the next few months, she started doing that. It was so clear what God was doing, and she became a pastor on staff with us. Helped me broaden and expand the prayer ministry, which opened the door then for Miss Iva to step in a few later. Iva, she refers to me, which I appreciate. Thank you very much. But she came up, up in, under Gina as maybe as much or maybe more than me in many ways influenced by her. I think the first prayer group you came to, was it Gina's or mine? Yours. Mine. Mine. So, anyway, you can see what was this about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She's praying for me. Yeah. She was praying out her destiny. Yeah. That's right. yeah. I have a book coming out next year, and Gina helped me write it. She's still our, our main editor. Brother Copeland's books, that's Gina. That's Gina. God love her. And some of the richest times I've ever had in prayer, some of the greatest insights I've ever had were with Gina. 
that little gal I hardly knew that was scared to stand in front of a, a crowd. Not scared anymore, let me tell you. <laughs> she prayed out her destiny by following him, following the unction. Real quick, let me just lead to you some of these other things. First Corinthians uh, 14, 4, he who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies and improves himself. Set your sail to be edified, to build. It means build up, not just make you feel better about something. It'll do that too, but to be stronger. Ephesians says, I pray that you be three, be strengthened in your inner man by the Holy Ghost, your, himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. Some of you need a personality transplant. <laughs> I mean, I've had, I've had times I thought, boy, I got, we, there's some of this we need to get rid of. I'm talking about me, not somebody else. <laughs> we need a change here. Himself indwelling your innermost being and praying in tongues. And praying in tongues for that doesn't sound like having a discussion with God. It sounds more like a workout in the gym. <laughs> Let's walk in the floor. I'm very conscious. I'm building myself up, building myself up. Well, I'm kind of tired of doing it. Well, do it some more. Do it until that muscle gets sore and then get up in the morning and do it again. Work it out. If you can't pray in tongues more than two or three minutes, you need a workout. Put you in Miss Iva's group. Hallelujah. Ephesians, uh, see, I said that one. You give thanks well. Now, real quick, I want to tell you, may I just, I know it's like three past noon. Can y'all handle it or y'all gonna? Okay, all right, all right. Okay, thank you, thank you. You give thanks well. 1 Corinthians 14, 16. If you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen? In other words, you can't testify in tongues. I can't come to you and tell you what God did for me in tongues. That's, that's why, why would I? That doesn't make sense, but apparently they were trying to do that. It was a misappropriate use of tongues. Wrong tool. He doesn't understand what you say, but indeed you give thanks well, but the other person's not edified. We, by, we bypass that. You give thanks well. You can, you can be give thanks. You can, tongues can be used to worship. There are, there are two times when that's important. One, when you don't have, have words because you're empty. It's like I said the other day, just be, times I found myself, okay, I'm ungrateful. I know I'm ungrateful. And just start praying in tongues and let God point things out to me. Walking around the house, praying in tongues. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. Okay, Lord, you're going to have to show me how to be grateful for that. <laughs> grateful for things. Think grateful for people that you don't know quite how to be grateful for. Can save a marriage. A friendship. Relationships. A job. Praying in tongues. And, how, and finding, but how do you do it? You just don't just pray in tongues. Remember, you're setting your sail and I'm looking for that place of gratitude. And from that grati place of gratitude, you find it. And it, you know what? It has a tone. Gratefulness has a tone. Yes, Lord, yes. And to praise God. What is praise but to acknowledge what he is? Praise is not the same as worship. Praise acknowledges him, acknowledges what he's done, acknowledges who he is. Oh, God, you are so brush de le climbra, ha, ha, ha. And say, came by the nini, and you still la brush de, and you climb brane le ke, and you caramish de atara va so, a ti still la macaste. Ah, ste kim la fropa testi. Oh, maste le le brasto camerata, and you come brane le mason drachish de ke lo moho con glesh de ata. But worship, on the other hand, worship doesn't just recognize something God's done. God, worship yields to him in order to become like him. You can recognize something he's done, but never yield to it fully. But worship means to bow. Worship means to kiss the hand. Worship means to yield over. 
So to acknowledge him as creator, ho, 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 radelama, shakalama, guy, and you cabrasta, and you comblera, ho, ho, la braste, kemara, tom, oh, my kestela, la makar, hu, la braste, le kiara, mandeste, yata. But to worship the creator, to worship him, oh, mate, stepa. And you are about to keep the other. Romans uh, 12, this is to, um, thank you, Jesus, got over in spirit, can't think the words. Um, Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, which is, King James says, reasonable service, Amplified says, is your reasonable worship. Offer that, what God, what you put in me of you, offer it back to you. Offer it back to you. How do I do that? How do I write this song? What is the song? How do I, how do I run this camera? How do I put this message together? I speak for you. Now, I give myself to you. What is in you? You put it in me. Now, I give it back to you. I washed it. Lord, I see. Now, in that place, don't you think he wants to tell you? He wants to show you. Not everything God says to us is communicated in words because his thoughts, his words were first his thoughts. Show you a picture. Jesus said, I do what I see the Father do. Tongues is a key to walking in love. Maybe you've never read this verse this way. Jude 20. 21, beloved, building yourselves up on your holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God. Faith, praying in tongues, you can use it to keep you in the love of God. I know there have been times I've been under pressure to get mad at somebody get under pressure to lash out or be frustrated. And even if I didn't say anything to them, the pressure is there and I have that pressure to deal with. And if you don't, if you don't spiritually get rid of it, it will affect you. Just turn inward. I'm praying in tongues. I've set my sail to pray in tongues to keep me in love. Praying in tongues refreshes and relieves the mind of resourcing. 1 Corinthians 14 and 15, 14, 14. If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, my understanding is unfruitful. Well, that doesn't mean so don't pray in tongues. Thank God it gets past that mind of yours that's giving you trouble. What is it then? I'll pray with the spirit and I'll pray with the understanding. I'll sing with the spirit. I'll sing with the understanding. Isaiah 28, with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people. To them whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you cause the weary to rest. There is a rest that sleeping, I mean a weariness that sleeping won't cure. Time off won't cure. A vacation won't fix. A sabbatical won't fix. But praying in the spirit brings a rest and a refreshing. It keeps you praying on a higher level than mental knowledge can produce. When you try to resource your mind for something, you keep looking through that file and you look backwards and forwards and forwards and backwards and it's not there. Quit going there. Quit going to the empty file drawer and pray in the Holy Ghost. Set your sails to find the answer. Hallelujah. The last tongues, another reason why we don't throw it out, he said, it's a sign to unbelievers. 
This is the most remarkable sign. It's the only thing that I know of that's actually named a sign. Now we see other things that are signs, but he named that and said, that's a sign to the unbeliever. First Corinthians 14, 22, wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. Mark 16, 17, those that believe, they speak with other tongues. So if tongues is only a sign to you as some denominations preach, that you have to have a witness, you have to have a feeling, you have to be moved. And it's a sign that the spirit is there. If that's all it is to you, then you're not believing because the believer speaks. Hallelujah. The believer speaks in an unknown tongue. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you for appreciating and valuing these things. Thank you as a congregation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a church that will yield to that. Thank you for being hungry for him. Thank you. You know, thank you because it helps the whole body of Christ. But I don't know. It may, it may come into play in people's lives in ways you don't even know. Just think when you're praying in tongues and if you're praying in the rain and the windshield wipers are going, whose face might pop up there? If it's me, go ahead and pray. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you very much for the, 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 your generosity with your time and the way you have allowed me to come and take your time and, and uh, endeavor to express these things and these wonderful mysteries of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a classroom we got to be in today. What a classroom. I don't know if she slammed one whole semester into this, but I'm telling you, it's just a loaded classroom. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I was sitting there thinking, um, um, I, I'm one, I appreciate art. I'm not an artist. I'm not good at it, but I sure appreciate it. Amen. And my favorite artist in the whole world is sitting on the front row. My absolute favorite. And I'm telling you, he's world-class artist. And he gifts me with so much. And I just sit and he'll, he'll gift me with some lovely paintings. And I'll sit and go, how do you do? How, how, how come you have brushes the rest of the world doesn't have or and um when i go to their town they, there's uh, different galleries where his art is on display and you walk through and you see you see his stuff and you you appreciate it but i've gotten to go in times when there's a there's a different room where his easel is set up and all of his stuff is laid out and he's giving a painting class or just he's painting with others and I stand there, and although the, the art that's completed is hanging on the wall, I want to stand and watch the process. Today, you got to be in on the process. Today, you didn't just admire the end result of what God has done in someone's life, but you've heard and, and you've gotten to observe the process of it. Amen. And we don't count it a light thing, Pastor Terry, for pulling out your easel and pulling out the, uh, the canvas and all the, all the, the instruments to, to just allow us to watch and listen and hear and take in. And it, 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 it adds something for our walk for our own walk. Amen. You know, I was sitting there thinking, um, she was talking about creation and how it says God would come down in the cool of the day and walk with Adam. But we're, we have a higher place than that. We, he doesn't come down to us and walk with us. We've been raised and seated to flow with him as well as 
he is with us and walks with us among this, but we're not staying there. And she's helping us to know how to operate on his level. Tongues is his plane of things, right? Amen. So my, 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 uh, you, you're going to have to listen many, many times over and, and over. Uh, we want to go ahead and receive an offering for Pastor Terry right now. And uh, we're generous. We're givers. Um, hallelujah. We're givers. God funds us so that we are fully supplied, but so that we can also have an additional flow to our supply. And that is so we can be a giver and we can be generous. And so we receive that. There are, there are several ways you can give. You can text the word guest to the number on the screen, 951-939-91. Or you can go to online on our website, deframeministries.org slash give, and you can give that way. If you're making out a check, making it payable to DM or Defrain Ministries, we, we ask you if it's by check, do make it payable to us so that we can send write her one check. And we'll add to it. There's nothing of hers that you, that you give to her that stays here. It all goes home with her. And so you don't need to be concerned. We just don't want to hand her a stack of, of individual things. It just makes it easier for, for us to just give her one. And we invite those of you who are watching, get involved in this. Honor what you've, what you've heard and received today. Uh, we're not paying for anything, but we're certainly honoring what we've received. And so we take something tangible and we honor that. Amen. While you're making, yes, come up. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have uh, her materials back in the back. So you need to get hold of it. She was talking about last night, the card here with the code that's going to take you to all the resources of hers that are available. Get hold of it. I have one. I do have one complaint. I'm just going to complain. I, her books aren't big enough. They're not thick enough. There's not enough pages. I know she's working on it, but she needs to work faster. <laughs> Gina, get on it. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, praying, praying with power. My, I go, how come you just put the introduction in the book? And you didn't write the body of it. No, I'm teasing. But I'm just saying, the more we can get, the better off we are. Uh, praying in the spirit. Uh, this is out there for you to get hold of. Spirit led prayer, a compilation of her articles. And so those are compiled for you on prayer. And so get hold of those materials. There'll be a blessing to you out there. Do you want to come up now? And yeah, come on up, love. Yeah. I didn't want to be amiss and forget to tie in Reba's song. So we said last night that there are sounds and songs where music and words come together and they open up a place. And it's why you've got to learn to exercise your faith in the things of the Spirit without music. And don't, don't uh, always look to music to dictate to you where you need to go. You let the Lord do that. But there are many times when you go to a song. So all these things that we were just talking about, we spend so much time today about the Creator. And in that song, there's so much in it. Such a simple song, you know. It, it's it, it's not the words don't lay out an enormous amount of doctrine, but yet in them the Lord touched it in such a way that you can go to that and let that song open up in you in you and use that, or could be some other song, but for example, that one, use that as a springboard. Yeah. So when that place opens up, it just, as you write in, as you begin to pray in the spirit, sometimes I even take songs like that. And while it's being sung in English, I'm lifting that to the, to the same melody. Oh, yeah. I'm lifting up tongues to yes. that. Yes. And then just let it carry me on over where he wants me to go. Yes. And I, intended to say that and forgot to bring so it together. So good. Yeah. So good. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. We're learning. I said we're learning. We're learning. And we're, 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 we purpose to be doers of what we hear. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give this morning? Hold your offering up before the Lord. Father, we thank you for what we've received. We honor what we've received. We thank you so very much. We honor it. 
and as we give this morning, we release our faith. You're our provider. We're so thankful for the avenues you use to increase our life, but no avenue is our provider. You're our provider. So avenues may come, avenues may go, but our provider remains constant. And our provision is always sure. And we're so, so grateful for it. Hallelujah. Let's just, let's just pray. Let's just pray a moment in other tongues. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Pastor Noel, come up here, if you would. I just had a bit of a, a check. I'm not trying to tag on anything to Pastor Terry, but I just have a bit of a, that there's just something. So just follow what's in your heart. A spirit, a spirit of singing, no, you just heard, you just heard, you just heard. I can't get, it's a good, I took a shot. This will, this will take us to the finish line. We will see, we will see the finish. Oh, she, the spirit, a greater flow of the spirit of seeing and knowing. Oh, you, you, the ingredients of it. You heard the ingredients. Tasting, you you can, you can, you, 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 a greater, greater flow of miracles and signs and waters from the mind of the Father. It will be poured out. Oh, you did to go, I go to stay in the days, the days of my the name, the name, the name that is above all name. Oh, oh, it shall be glorified and magnified. Oh, he's, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, his return when that name is magnified and glorified on the earth. Lord, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Let's just lift up our hands and worship Him. We glorify, we glorify, Mastikikiki Yata Bostotototoshikiki. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step into this and trust that it's okay with Pastor Terry. I remember, um, my goodness, over 30 years ago now, I was in a service, um, and Rachel Tifa Tiller was sitting right next to me. She's a, a precious woman who just developed her prayer life, and um, she wasn't ministering. She was just sitting there. Another person was ministering, and right at the end of the service, she just turned around and put her hand on me and, and ministered to me, just in the chair, not not anything up front where others would have even seen it. And um, I realized when I left that place that I was in her place in the spirit. And for days that say, I'm not going, this is not a place that I had stepped into on my own. When she laid hands on me, I got a taste of her place. And in that, God was giving me a taste of this is what's available. If you'll keep developing, he was giving me a taste of that place. And I knew that um, you can't, there's impartations that function different ways. But I had in my heart, and let me do it this way, for those that are pastors or ministers, or you're in the full-time ministry, Pastor Terry, would you be willing to lay hands on them? And I, it seems to me God's going to give you a taste of the place and places that maybe you haven't been in that she's 
instructing and demonstrating to us. And something will be elevated in your fellowship with God, but in that place of prayer. The key is stay in that as long as you can. And you give yourself to that. Praying in the Spirit, being very mindful of that, and it, you'll, it'll reside on you in, in, a, in a way that if we go out and do something natural to cause it to be, if I could say this, diminished, we don't want to do that. But I'm going to ask her to do that. So if you're in the full, if you're a pastor or you're in the full time ministry, a tr you could be a traveling minister, but you are full time ministry. Uh, stand, stand to your feet if you would and let's see how many that is and if you would like her to minister to you we invite you I'm going to uh, just come to these two aisles here and, and then the ushers will direct you And hold on to your offering, leave it on your chair, whatever. We'll, we'll still receive that at the end, but I want us to go ahead and accomplish this part. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God told Elijah to go and anoint Elisha to stand in his room. So for some, it's the taste of something because you need it for the moment. It needs to be added to what you're doing. And I've had that happen to me in a, with a couple of different people. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's for a moment for you to be acquainted with it. For others, for Elisha, he said for him to stand in your room or to stay there. Good. No. You weren't called to stay where Rachel stayed. No. Rachel lived only there. Sure. Sure. She lived there. But because of her calling, she imparted a grace into Nancy that then equipped Nancy from that room to operate more in the place in God that Nancy has, that she's assigned to. Does that make sense to you? So that's a, yes. a scriptural good. to do that. Good. How do you want me to do okay. this? Hallelujah. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It's an adding to. Nadia 
for a moment. Just play. I just want to listen to them. The same song. Thank you. 
Deke, Nora, Sikia, Ha, 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 Take the kiss, take it at all. Lord, now is in the Akorono, they are at a bash to Yata. Thank you, Jesus. Arene, thank you, Jesus. Rasha da la la la, or Rash Dele. Oh, my sick yellow. There's a kid of Osh, they are at a TV seat. Sabaka has to keep it here. They eyes to do the robot, they are dashed the other. Some maraga, they look rush the alala. Yeah, to kiss the food that they are tito for me. Say, they take the don't they take it. Ah, oh, yeah, that's as a satan of old dish to keep it. Yeah, 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 car, it is to get it a post, it did a was in it. Time love rushed. Glory to Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise Him. Marajadada. Ingleata varasondo te 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 ashta. Kinanada vasondo te ala. Ya, ya, bro, ho, ho, te banana na na hada. Ya, bro, te di di vo te te ata. Lord, ara na na hada da da do de. Show him one to make him one. Ala kada da da pa stikira tre varo mu ho ni 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 ata. Ya, krishta ka ya da. Yeah, 
o kar adana başlıyor ki hangi reştekli blav rosta ha ha na 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 mesele la vro bro şteki tata thank you lord jesus satata yo no okay ara manda de ya so de ya ta no cha de le le va ko ti 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 tata yo ta ana na ma si this there's witness with you but sometimes you leave too quick Sometimes you you skip out on them too quick. Be, be exercise your patience more with him. Let let him finish the work that let him begin. Finish the work that he began. But sometimes you pop out too quick. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you you miss part of it. You miss part of the show. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha ha ha. Sing le gerej da 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 da. English de kira pasuko. Now is it? Jesus, Lord, as a carrot of a sticky lemosh, Dora Manana, Dizia La Barocco, now is the Kina Robosh de Atana Matanda. Indre, as a satata bodo de 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 cabana, no saint de lava, now is the Kita, O de Aravashta, Indera Voso de Haro. Lord, now is the clicky Nenishta, I is thou self lake resto. Lord, Anna. Jesus name <laughs> oh, praise Jesus, Sada. Ainu masando de de ta ta shokis is ta ta na. She no no mo se te de la mo goroma. Okay, Lord, I'll tell. Aramano she de la la makayum te pe da na. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm impressed to say this to you too. Um, <laughs> some of you may encounter some things maybe soon or maybe later but as, as you're praying or you're walking out things in the spirit and some of it you might not like you might not like the things that you run into but you know the disciples said to Jesus they said well we we'll go with you where you are and he wherever you go we'll go and he said are you ready to drink the cup that I'm gonna drink oh yeah Lord uh-huh <laughs> and so, you, you know, just saying, there's sometimes some things you get into and not, not everything, everything in God has a glorious outcome, but some of those journeys and some of those things you're assigned to deal with and to take on and to um, All I can say, if you encounter some of those, I believe the Lord will give you wisdom and counsel, but, um, you know, welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. <laughs> now, some of you didn't like that. That's okay. That's between you and the Lord, you know. That's between you and the Lord, but His grace is sufficient for whatever He's got for you. And whatever he calls for you to encounter or to deal with, whatever he calls, he calls you to be victorious over it. You know, hallelujah. There really could be a bigger hallelujah there, but I understand why there's not. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You got some places to go in prayer. You got some places to go. <laughs> you got some places to go, sister. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sarabashtele. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, how wonderful you are, Lord. How wonderful you are, Jesus. How wonderful, Jesus. How wonderful you are, Jesus. How wonderful. How wonderful. How wonderful. 
praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Ah, yeah, taki veramo. I sense that. I love all the red of us to your bum. Mm hmm. Parana na leke oro te se se si sto te te te. Marash te ala konde a karamash te a ke. Ha sa la bori te shte ki. Thank you, Lord. Ingle ki sto koyo te a ta. Isa ta no koste ki a ta. Te ki la koste. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Shneya Satak. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, yeah. Sakelama. Oh, you start a ban and a massa. Oh, <laughs> is that a bash day like? Oh, oh, Sarana bash day Adana. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sarah, make a little water, but me. Hi, they adore my nana nana. Ungle kish the atato. Vor and in the tiaratos at the atatani bestiki. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise him, Maraj Dalla. Praise the Sisima. Get in a lakash de Akaya. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That everybody. Is there more? Oh, one more. Praise God. Hallelujah. I know who you are. <laughs> pray. Oh, praise. Yeah, praise Jesus. Hold on to me. Hold on to me. Right here. Just hold on. It's okay. Right here. Just observe. Yeah, yeah, ma. Hey, no, no, ma. He did it. Oh, hey, no, ma, la, la. Ah, 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 Ah. Praise Jesus. Yeah, thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for that divine equipping. We thank you for the divine help. We're so, so grateful. We honor it. We glorify you. We glorify you. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, let's sing something, Miss Rachel. Something you've been playing, Tony, is good. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Jesus, we glorify, we magnify you, and we thank you. We worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Well, you don't want to miss tonight. It's going to be good. We want to remind you. I'm going to receive the offering, so I, I haven't forgotten. But before before we go any further, I want to remind you. We would say normally one o'clock uh, prayer with the Ramoses. What two o'clock? One one forty-five. What what's what's your what's your choice? What's your choice? 145 okay back there in there and then uh with brother david the worship school um let's you want to do 145 also on that okay so that means a, a quick bite for those who are going to to come and we're just so thankful for what he, he has for us in these services amen ushers i want you to go ahead pass the offering on um, pass the offering buckets and they can just drop that in hallelujah Hallelujah. Go ahead and pass the offering buckets up and down there. I'll say this with me. All the money that's needed for the vision of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. It all comes. It all comes. All the money that my church needs, it'll come. All the money that I need, it'll come. All the money that my business needs, It'll come. You say, well, Pastor Nancy, I don't have a business. When a man hires you, now that's your business. Make it bloom. Make it flourish. Treat it. Bring all the faith to it that you would if it were your, your own name on that, on that board. Amen. Hallelujah. All, it all comes. It all comes. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, we're reminding you, 7 o'clock tonight, you don't want to miss it. Join us for prayer or for the worship sessions. And turn to somebody before you're dismissed and say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. And you can be dismissed. God bless you.